Hello everyone and welcome to a new edition of Around the World in 80 Planes. While the previous series was done in X-Plane 11, this series will be in both Flight Sim 2020 and X-Plane 11, with the legs planned so that the less remarkable scenery like flying over water will be done with the comparatively faster planes I have in X-Plane 11 like the Concorde and the SR-71. Another difference this time is that I'll be flying primarily through, though not exclusively, in the Southern Hemisphere. It's my goal to visit a lot of places I don't normally fly around. One thing that will be the same as the previous series is that I'll be listening to the Apollo program audio while flying, starting with Apollo 14, since I ended with the Apollo 13 audio in the previous series. And I'll be uploading the flights uncut so that you can use the, these videos to listen to the Apollo audio yourself. I have condensed the audio to remove long silences and static to provide the optimal background listening experience, and I'll try to make sure my aircraft engines are not too loud. My first flight is from SYCJ to SOCA, and if that's not familiar, then that's exactly what I want. We're in unfamiliar places, and so that's Chetty Jagan International in Georgetown, Guiana, and we're flying to Rochambeau in French Guiana, passing over Paramaibo in Suriname, and hopefully we'll be able to see Guiana Space Center in Kourou close to the end of our trip. There are two Flight Sim 2020 points of interest near the end of the trip, Dreyfus Tower in Kourou and Caserne Loubert in Cayenne, so we'll take a look at those. The plane that we are in is the MB339 by India Fox Teco, a very trusted plane, and of course I will be flying 80 different planes during the course of this series. So, let's start the Apollo 14 audio about one hour prior to launch. It's a T minus one hour or so, but uh, they actually have a sort of a delay in the midst of it, a hold, due to weather. But it's not going to take us an hour to get to the actual launch if like, you're trying to zoom ahead to that point because I've cut out the silences. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's not going to be that long. So here we go, starting the audio. This is and the flight. Control of T minus 60 minutes and counting. T minus 60, one hour away from the Apollo 14 liftoff. All aspects of the countdown still proceeding very satisfactorily at this time, and in fact, a number of events with some 10 or 15 minutes ahead of uh, the assigned work in the countdown manual. Uh, because of this, the Apollo access arm, swing arm number 9, will probably come back about 10 minutes earlier than it usually would in the countdown. By coming back early, it will... Uh, well, there's a car on the runway. <laughs> That's point, weird. Move 12 degrees from the spacecraft. That's a little bit of... Feet. Excitement at the beginning of this. Until the five minute mark in the count when it's fully retracted. A short while ago, uh, astronaut Alan Shepard uh, was told uh, by the spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin that things were going very well and uh, that we were ahead on the count. Uh, Alan at that point said, uh, thanked him for the information and said, how's the weather out there? The reply uh, came back that there is some cover, but it looks pretty fair. Actually, the clouds we have in the area at the present time have a base of about 3,000 feet and extend up to 8,000 feet, with uh, some uh, getting as high as 12,000 feet. This does not appear to be any constraint to a launch attempt uh, as far as the cloud cover is concerned at this time. That's our status. Uh, the countdown's still running smoothly. We're go on Apollo 14, T-minus 58 minutes, 33 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control, T-minus 55 minutes and counting. T-minus 55 and counting, all still proceeding very satisfactorily with Apollo 14. We've just completed some telemetry checks of the launch vehicle as the countdown uh, continues. The astronaut crew has been advised that the swing arm uh, the Apollo access arm, swing arm number nine, will be coming back in about a minute and 40 seconds from this time. It will remain in a standby position about six feet from the spacecraft until we reach the five-minute mark in the count when it will be fully retracted. The pad leader and the closeout crew have departed from the 320-foot level and are now at uh, the roadblock uh, position standing by. For an update on network uh, operations concerned with the mission, we now switch to Mission Control in Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, minus 54 minutes and counting. The uh, worldwide uh, manned spaceflight network is prepared for launch at this time. Only uh, one problem has emerged, uh, this uh, very minor problem. At uh, Carnarvon, uh, C-band coverage is red because of a computer problem. However, this uh, gives no constraint uh, to launch 
because of the uh, unified S-band coverage uh, in that area. Weather conditions along the ground track across the Atlantic are expected to be satisfactory, as uh, has been reported, uh, uh, with uh, one area of high winds and uh, seas uh, midway between uh, Florida and Bermuda. Uh, in the area, we uh, expect southwesterly winds of some 25 to 30 knots and uh, seas of 8 to uh, 12 feet. Here in Mission Control, except uh, for a few more people uh, than we see in simulations, it's uh, much the same. A quiet calmness uh, best describes the mood of the control center as the uh, Houston Flight Control Team monitors the final countdown now in progress. Uh, however, in less than an hour, the atmosphere here will change uh, when the control of the flight switches to Houston. Our uh, flight director today, uh, Pete Frank, uh, will be calling for rapid status reports uh, from each member of his team uh, throughout the booster-powered phase of flight. Over what is known as the flight director's loop, uh, we expect to hear a great deal from uh, a gentleman named uh, Dave Reed, uh, our flight dynamics officer, and Frank Van Rensselaer, the booster systems engineer, uh, since they will be monitoring the uh, crucial trajectory and uh, launch vehicle data. We're approaching We're Georgetown minus, uh, here. 52 minutes, and uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. So that's Georgetown up ahead, and then we'll turn east this from there. Kennedy launch control. We're now 52 minutes, 13 seconds, and counting. Seems like we got and some roads here that don't have buildings that occur. should. The Apollo Access arm now has been retracted and is in the standby position. As soon as the arm is retracted, the pyrotechnic systems within the spacecraft are armed. This means now that 155-pound thrust escape tower that is atop of the spacecraft can be deployed in a critical emergency if necessary from this point down in the countdown 51 minutes 42 seconds and counting this is kennedy launch control you notice in these areas we have a lot of generic scenery rather kennedy than photo control. scenery on the surface five minutes and counting t minus 45 still go with apollo 14 in the countdown at this time just a matter of a few minutes ago astronauts Stu rusa uh, wound up uh, pressurizing the reaction control system of the service module on the spacecraft. These are the big 100-pound thrust uh, engines, uh, which are in quadrants, four quadrants around the side of the service module, which are used uh, for certain uh, types of spacecraft maneuvers uh, on the trajectory to and from the moon. Uh, Stu Russo read off the various pressures involved in the different quadrants, and they were recorded by the spacecraft test conductor. Uh, coming up in a matter of a few minutes will be uh, one of the final major checks of the Range Safety Command destruct system aboard the vehicle. These are the uh, destruct packages in each of the stages which uh, would be uh, initiated in the event the vehicle uh, veered violently off trajectory and could be a danger uh, to anyone or anything below. Of course, before destruct action uh, would ever occur, uh, the escape tower first would be triggered on the spacecraft to successfully separate the astronauts uh, from the vehicle in trouble. 43 minutes, 43 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. So right now we're listening to the public affairs officer uh, loop only. This is Kennedy Later Launch on we'll get some of the air to ground. And counting. T minus 40. We are proceeding satisfactorily with Apollo 14. Just as this announcement began, uh, we began a key test here in the firing room, a power transfer test in which uh, we switched from the external power on the vehicle to the batteries in each of the three stages and the instrument unit uh, of the Saturn V. This test is in progress at this time. After we are assured that all batteries are operating satisfactorily, we will return to external power in order to preserve the power of those batteries uh, for the actual powered phase of flight. We actually will return to internal power uh, at 50 seconds in the countdown. The astronauts standing by in the spacecraft at the 320-foot level at launch pad A, uh, they're about 10 minutes ahead in their work, and uh, they have finished up the pressurization of the reaction control system of the Apollo spacecraft. 39 minutes and counting. We're go with Apollo 14 at this time. Uh, we will take a close look at our cloud conditions at about the 10 minute mark in the count de to determine our status. Now 38 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. 
This is Kennedy Launch Control, T minus 35 minutes and counting. T minus 35, all going well with Apollo 14. Astronauts just been advised by uh, spacecraft uh, test conductor Skip Chauvin that we've just passed the 35 minute mark and a clip Roger came back in reply. The countdown is still going well. We're keeping a close uh, look at our cloud cover and we'll proceed to count down uh, to the 10 minute mark take a close look there, and if it appears that we will be clear, we will continue our countdown down through liftoff. We have completed our power transfer test, and all is still going well with the count. 34 minutes, 21 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control, T minus 30 minutes and counting. T minus 30, all elements of the Apollo 14 countdown still go at this time. At this point in the count, the Apollo 14 lunar module uh, named Antares is now going on internal power. There are two batteries in the ascent stage and four batteries on the descent stage of the uh, lunar module for Apollo 14. If the uh, lunar module will remain internal for some 20 minutes uh, until a 10 minute mark in the count as we look, uh, take a final look at the lunar module systems before we're ready to commit to fly. The LEM then again will be powered down at the 10 minute mark in the, the countdown. Still well ahead on a number of functions, the astronauts standing by in the spacecraft, all still going well. T minus 29 minutes, 10 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control, T minus 25 minutes and counting, T minus 25. All is still go with the Apollo 14 count. We are keeping a close look on the clouds in the KSC area, particularly here at Complex 39 at this time. Uh, these uh, uh, clouds are ranging from three to 8,000 feet at the present time. We'll take a close look at the 10 minute mark to determine our posture to continue the count. We're still aiming at this time to at our planned T0 and liftoff at 3.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In progress here in firing room two, uh, the crew is monitoring some automatic telemetry calibrations of the Saturn V launch vehicle. This is to assure that we are properly calibrated uh, to receive the in-flight information during the powered phase of the mission. 24 minutes, 11 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control, T minus 23 minutes and counting, T minus 23. We are go with Apollo 14 at this time. Just a matter of seconds ago, uh, the spacecraft commander, Alan Shepard, was advised of the status of the count at 24 minute mark. Uh, Shepard reported back, he said it's rather quiet out there, and he was informed it's quiet because things are going so well. He was referring to the communication circuit he's on. He said, I'm glad to hear that. This is Kennedy Launch Control. It could be that the uh, ground textures are just outdated photo scenery, drastically outdated, but I don't know. This is Kennedy Launch Control at T minus 20 minutes. Some patches definitely look just 20, generic. Still go with Apollo uh, 14 at Not this time. very repetitive Vice generic, the but. United States, uh, Spiro Agnew and uh, their Royal Highnesses, the Prince. Maybe not around here, Spain, but around Georgetown itself. The viewing site at this time. Meanwhile, here in the firing room, we're continuing to monitor the status of all those propellants, more than a million gallons of propellants aboard the Saturn V uh, launch vehicle. The reports keep coming back that all is still going well. The astronauts standing by in the spacecraft at this point, we're keeping a close eye on the clouds overhead, and we'll take a hard look at our situation at the 10-minute mark in the count to determine our progress from then on down. T-minus 19 minutes, 16 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control. T-minus 15 minutes and counting. T-minus 15. We are still go with our countdown, taking a close look at cloud conditions, and uh, we'll take a close look at the 10-minute mark in the count. Uh, starting at this point, the astronaut crew is going to be quite busy in the spacecraft as the Apollo 14 spacecraft goes on full internal power. This is the full internal power of the fuel cells. Up to this time in the countdown, uh, we've been sharing the load, so to speak, with an external power source along with the fuel cells. 
Uh, at, as we go on internal power, the lunar module pilot, Ed Mitchell, will give readouts to the spacecraft test conductor on how the power situation looks. Spacecraft Commander Alan Shepard will also give some final readouts on the stabilization and control system of the Apollo spacecraft. Both Shepard and Stu Russo will arm the rotational hand controllers uh, that are on their armrests in the cabin. We'll take a close look at the clouds at the 10-minute mark in the count to determine our posture for proceeding with the countdown. 13 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control, T minus 10 minutes and counting, T minus, T minus 10. We are proceeding at this time. However, the weather conditions, the clouds in the area being evaluated at this point. If a hold is required, it could occur about two minutes from this time. We'll stand by for further reports. In the meantime, uh, the Apollo 14 flight crew have completed some checks on what's called the Astro Launch Circuit. This is a special radio frequency circuit used by the spacecraft communicator the launch operations manager, and the spacecraft test conductor to uh, advise the astronauts of abort conditions. This is Kennedy Launch Control. We are now advised that we will hold for weather. We will hold the countdown at the eight-minute mark in the count. We're now at nine minutes, 10 seconds, and counting. To repeat, we will hold the countdown at the eight-minute mark because of cloud conditions in the launch facility area. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Up ahead, we can see a uh, river mouth. Uh, that's this the Corentine River, which is the border between Guyana and Suriname. Mark, we are holding. Uh, the clock shows eight minutes and two seconds in the count. We are holding at this time. Uh, the reason for the hold is cloud conditions in the area. It appeared that one bad uh, cloud patch could be over the launch pad at the planned time of 23 minutes past the hour. We are standing by at this time uh, at eight minutes and two seconds and holding. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control. We remain in our hold on the Apollo 14 countdown. The clock reading minus eight minutes and two seconds and holding. The reason, uh, cloud conditions in the area. We have uh, had an aircraft aloft uh, in the area during uh, the full progress of the final countdown, and we were advised at the 10-minute mark in the count that it appeared that one particular cloud cell coming across the Indian River, that is coming west over the launch pad area, appeared to have rain in it and uh, some potential, and it was reaching up to altitudes of some 15,000 feet. As a result, the launch director, Walt Caprian, uh, determined that we should hold. We're going to remain in this posture at approximately... Seems like they might have learned something from Apollo be, 12 uh, there. Uh, no, no more than some 10 minutes away uh, from a launch attempt, as long as this is possible. Uh, we are going to be advised by uh, the flying aircraft of conditions and hopefully be able to get a forecast uh, that things will look... Uh, better in 15-minute increments. That is, when we get a go from the aircraft, uh, we would be able to launch some 15 minutes later. So uh, we do not have a firm estimate at this time. However, uh, the aircraft commander has advised that he feels he will uh, be able to uh, give us one in a short while. That is our situation, standing by at 8 minutes and 2 seconds and holding. The Apollo 14 crew has been advised. They're also standing by in the spacecraft. It is possible we may get some rain in the area shortly uh, from this same cloud cell that we were concerned about for the launch attempt. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control. We remain in our hold at T-minus eight minutes and two seconds and holding because of cloud conditions in the area. We can remain in this posture at the eight minute mark for approximately one hour. Uh, if we had to remain in the hold longer, we would have to recycle to an earlier mark in the countdown. But we can remain here at the eight minute mark for approximately one hour from the time the, the count uh, was held. Our situation, as far as the clouds are concerned, from the latest advice from the aircraft, is at its earliest, these cloud conditions might be able to pass through this area in about 15 minutes. 
if at the end of that time the aircraft uh, could give us a good forecast that we uh, would be fairly clear for 20 minutes beyond that time, uh, it's very possible the countdown could be resumed. However, we expect to be in this position at the present time for at least 15 or 20 minutes. We remain at T-minus 8 minutes, 2 seconds, and holding. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control. We remain in our hold at T-minus 8 minutes and 2 seconds by the clock. The launch vehicle test conductor, Gene Sestil, has just uh, advised all the support elements for the three stages and instrument unit of the Saturn V that the best estimate at this time is this hole will continue for another 15 minutes. Uh, he also pointed out uh, to his test conductors for the various stages that uh, they should be ready when they are alerted to be able to pick up the count at the eight minute mark. That is our status. We're awaiting further word from the aircraft that's surveying the clouds from the top and we remain at T-minus eight minutes. This is Kennedy Launch Control. So the last bit of Guiana and entering Suriname waters, I guess, will be off the coast a bit for a while. The eight minute and two second mark on the Apollo 14 countdown. The National Weather Service's aircraft in the area now advises uh, that this cloud buildup we have uh, should continue through the area for another 15 to 30 minutes. However, he reports that uh, presently just northwest of the Kennedy Space Center and northwest of the city of Titusville, the area does appear to be clearer, and he indicates that there would be a good possibility to resume the count some 30 minutes or so from this time. We'll be standing by for further reports as uh, we await uh, continuing reports from the weather plane. The uh, clouds here extend up to about 18,000 feet, and we are getting some rain in the Complex 39 area at this time. Eight minutes and two seconds, and holding on the clock for Apollo 14. This is Kennedy Launch Control. On the waterway behind us, there's a town called New Amsterdam, and there seems to be some docks and this stuff. This is Kennedy Launch Control. We remain in our hold at T-minus 8 minutes and 2 seconds on the clock. Uh, the Apollo 14 Not flight sure. crew, astronauts Alan Shepard, Stu Rusa, and Ed Mitchell have been advised of our situation, and they acknowledge the information, and they've basically been resting back in the spacecraft. Uh, we have not heard any reports from them uh, lately. Uh, they have, uh, however, the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin, is keeping them updated on the weather information. They have been told, as we have been told here in the firing room, that the conditions uh, could possibly improve in some uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, and uh, the area does, uh, there does appear to be a clear area behind this present uh, large cloud cell that is passing over Complex 39 at this time. That's our status. We remain in a hold, eight minutes and two seconds. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Well, we can certainly see there's some satellite photo scenery here because it extends into the water there. This is Kennedy Launch Control, remaining in the hold, T minus eight yep. minutes and two seconds. I guess it's just outdated near 14. Georgetown. We're standing by for further advisories from the National Weather Service's aircraft, which is surveying the cloud conditions in the area. Just a matter of a minute or two ago, the director of uh, flight crew operations, Dick Slayton, uh, called in to Al Shepard in the spacecraft and mentioned uh, to Al that at least it's more comfortable up there than it was in the old days. Al reported back, oh my, yes. He also added to, to Dick that we're in good shape up here. Because of the hold, of course, Al Shepard on his Mercury launch had to be on hold for hours and had to pee in his suit. So that was a reference to that from Deke Slayton. Uh, no worries about that in this case. Control still in the hold, T minus eight minutes and two seconds in uh, our Apollo 14 countdown. We're still standing by for further reports from the weather plane. Uh, indications are about the same as reported earlier. Uh, some. 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Uh, this time has extended a little bit as uh, we have remained in the hold. However, we are still being told that we expect that this cloud cover will clear the area. Obviously, when we do resume the count, as hopefully we will, a new azimuth update must be given to the astronauts to be placed in the computer for the flight. We were planning to fly on a 72 degree uh, launch azimuth 
had we gone at the prescribed time of 3.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This azimuth will increase as a result of uh, we're standing by. We have just been informed here in the firing room we expect to pick up our countdown in five minutes from this time. Yay. This announcement was being made. We have been alerted by Launch Director Walt Caprian. He has now given the go-ahead to resume the countdown in five minutes from this time. We remain at eight minutes and two seconds and holding on the clock. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control and our whole T-minus eight minutes and two seconds, but planning uh, to resume the countdown several minutes from this time. From the latest advisories from the weather aircraft, it appears that the higher altitude clouds will have cleared the area by our now new planned launch time. We still will be launching uh, through some cloud cover, uh, but the top of these clouds will be 10,000 feet or less. This is the latest forecast we have from our weather advisory via the aircraft. We're at T-minus eight minutes and two seconds and holding, but planning to resume the count in several minutes. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control and our hold at eight minutes and two seconds and holding. We have had a change of several minutes on resuming the countdown. The launch team has now been advised by the launch director we will resume the count at 55 minutes past the hour, which is some seven minutes from this time. We'll be standing by expecting to resume the count in some seven minutes uh, from this point. Eight minutes and two seconds in holding. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control, Apollo 14 countdown holding at eight minutes and two seconds, but expecting to resume the count five minutes from this time. The launch team has been advised here in the firing room and the spacecraft team back at the manned spacecraft operations building conducting the spacecraft portion of the countdown. The astronauts on board, of course, also have been alerted. Uh, they just came back with a Roger reply. This information we have been receiving concerning our cloud cover has been provided by a research flight facility aircraft uh, of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This aircraft has been flying in the area as support for the Apollo 14 mission. Eight minutes, two seconds in holding. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control, still in our hold at eight minutes and two seconds. By the I swear clock. this thing uses more gas than I think it ought to, Test but Supervisor Chuck Henschel has just polled. I think we'll be all right. Involved in the countdown, requesting their go status to pick up the count in about a minute and a half from this. It's time. only a 300 nautical ready, mile trip. We are standing 370, by. but Expecting still. Expecting to resume the count in a little less than one and a half minutes. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Didn't want to fly too high, just so that we can get some scenery and everything, but. Not full throttle or anything. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Mark, we have resumed our countdown. T minus eight minutes and counting on Apollo 14. We're still keeping a close eye on our weather conditions at this time, but Launch Director Walter Caprian has made the determination to resume the count. This should put us with a liftoff at three minutes past the hour if all continues to go well. We're now starting the chill down of the engine chambers on the third and second stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle. This is one of the critical elements and has to do with hold times. Uh, the chill down has to last a precise period. Uh, we feed in uh, extremely cold helium into the engine chambers of both the second stage and third stage to condition them for the very cold liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen that will be flowing into the chamber when they're due to ignite uh, later during the powered portion of the flight. All is uh, still going well as far as launch vehicles, spacecraft, and the three astronauts on board. Coming up in the seven minute mark. Mark, seven minutes and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Kennedy Launch Control, T-minus six minutes and counting, T-minus six. We're still proceeding at this time. We'll be standing by for the spacecraft ready, ready light to come on shortly uh, from the spacecraft test conductor to show that both the command module, Kitty Hawk, and the lunar module Antares are go for launch. Uh, status uh, report will be coming up shortly uh, to get a go from all elements in the countdown. At the three minutes, seven second mark in the count, we will go on an automatic sequence with the computer that will lead up uh, to the ignition sequence of the five engines in the first stage of the Saturn V, beginning at the 8.9 second mark in the count. All engines should be running at the two second mark, and we should get a commit and a liftoff uh, at the zero mark in the count. We're coming up now on the five minute mark in the count. Likewise. Launch director has just given a go uh, to continue the countdown. Mark, T minus five minutes and counting. We are go with Apollo 14. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Minus so at this point, we've been listening to the PAO loop, but now we've got the PAO loop on the right audio and then on the left audio the air to ground between the Capcom and the crew well I don't know if we hear the Capcom at this point but we hear the crew the abort engine lights now come on with two lights for astronaut Alan Shepard on the left hand side it could be the command module audio Three minutes, 30 seconds Thank and you, counting. We'll the, launch up, the launch operations manager now is... Because I don't think we're hearing part of the conversation and there. On behalf of the launch team, which is which him, him, Godspeed. Alan Shepard came back and okay, said, Thank you burn. very much, we'll Seven, give it a good ride. Five. Three minutes, 13 seconds and counting. We'll be coming up on the automatic sequence shortly. Mark, we have launch sequence start. The automatic right sequence is in, coming up on three minutes. T minus three minutes and counting. We are still go at this time with Apollo 14. Skip Chauvin has just asked Lunar Module Pilot Ed Mitchell uh, to bring on uh, the tape recorder on board the spacecraft. We are at two minutes, 46 seconds and counting. As we're on the automatic sequence, the various tanks in the Saturn V launch vehicle, those propellant tanks in all three stages begin pressurizing so that uh, the propellants can be forced into the engine chambers at the appropriate time. Coming up two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Uh, Shepard has been alerted uh, that he will uh, be making his final guidance check shortly. Second stage locks tank beginning to pressurize at two minutes and 20 seconds and counting. Still go at this time. Two minutes, 10 seconds, we are still go. We have taken the environmental control system uh, off external. We've gone on internal with the environment, environmental control of the spacecraft. Two minutes and counting. We are still go. The tanks in the Saturn V still continuing to pressurize. The sequence for the ignition of those five engines in the first stage of the Saturn V will begin at 8.9 seconds. We're now one minute, 45 seconds and counting. Still go with Apollo 14. We'll go on internal power in the Saturn V launch vehicle at the 50-second mark in the count. At ignition and liftoff, we'll have more than 7.5 million pounds of thrust pushing the space vehicle off the launch pad. This is the heaviest Saturn V space vehicle to be launched thus far. Coming up on the 1 minute 20 second mark. 1 minute 20 seconds and counting, a still go at this time. Third stage tanks now are pressurized according to our status board here in the firing room. One minute, 10 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control coming up in 60 seconds. Mark, T minus 60 seconds and counting. Still go with the count. First stage. Uh, All right, here we go. As our status board uh, gives us a rundown on the automatic sequence. They're finally ready. seconds and counting. We've now gone on internal power on the internal batteries of the Saturn V as the count continues. 40 seconds and counting. Alan Shepard reports that he's performing his final guidance alignment, the final uh, maneuver the astronauts performed before liftoff. 30 seconds and counting. Stu Russo just said thanks. It's been a good count. 25 seconds and counting. We are still go. 20 seconds. Guidance alert. The guidance system now going internal. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 
Ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Launch commit, liftoff. We have liftoff with Apollo 14. Three minutes past the hour. And they're off. The tower is clear. Houston is controlling. And good thrust on all five. In 16 seconds, pitch and roll program started. 14 maneuvering to a proper flight course. Twenty-five seconds. Okay, Houston, roll complete. Roger, roll complete. Shepard reports roll program completed. Pitch profile still in progress. Thirty-seven seconds. Stand by for mode one Bravo. Mark one Bravo now. Okay, we're one Bravo. Capcom Gordon Fullerton making that report. Mark, one minute. Cabin pressure coming down, adjusting from sea level to a space environment. Status check in mission control, coming up all greens on the flight director's console. In Houston, everything looks good here on the ground. Roger. One minute, 19 seconds, coming up on period of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. One minute, uh, 35 seconds, uh, nine nautical miles in altitude, five nautical miles downrange. Uh, velocity now reading uh, 33, uh, 140 feet per second. So we're approaching Paramaribo, Maribo, Paramaribo, and... Pass through Max Q. Mode one, Charlie. For mode launch, one, Charlie, no. I didn't Three remove the, uh, the silences. Roger. So, Two minutes, five seconds, uh, coming up on uh, center engine shutdown. During this part, it is real time. Two minutes, 12 seconds, 20 nautical miles in altitude. Inboard, cut off. Roger, inboard. Center engine shutdown on time. Two minutes, 25 seconds, 25 nautical miles in altitude, 30 nautical miles downrange. Mark, two minutes, 35 seconds, uh, coming up uh, on staging. Cut off. Roger. And separation. Roger. Ignition on five. Roger. Head staging, uh, the Shepard crew now riding on five good second stage engines. On five engines. Roger, we confirm good thrust on all five. The uh, giant first stage falling away now. It's day's work done. Three minutes, 10 seconds, coming up on skirt step and tower jettison. Skirt step. Gotcha. There goes the tower. Roger, we confirm this. The launch escape tower has ejected on top. Steam press, water auto. Roger, Ed. Three minutes, 35 seconds, uh, 14 now, 33 feet shorter, 9,000 pounds lighter, uh, moving out well beyond the Earth's atmosphere. We show an altitude of uh, 60 nautical miles. Mark uh, three minutes, 55 seconds, 63 nautical miles in altitude, 143 nautical miles downrange, velocity now. Send that four minutes, trajectory and guidance look good. 14, roger. Interesting uh, roadway CMC is go. at our right roger. wing tip. CMC go. Just going through Four a whole bunch of little homesteads with uh, longish fields. 50 feet per second and accelerating. In uh, mission control, Apollo 14's trajectory data driving right down the middle of our plot boards. Uh, right now, flight path data is go. I don't think the area in front of us right there seems to be represented properly. There's a lot of little paths or roadways or something. I mean, I assume those are roadways. Uh, there's 
no buildings. Coming up on five minutes, uh, 78 nautical Again. miles in altitude, uh, 235 nautical miles downrange. Could be other stuff going on there, but seems like there might be some buildings in the middle of that. Retro fire officer reports uh, their 14 is clear of the uh, Atlantic uh, weather. Anyway, you can sort of see in the distance there, Paramaribo, the, I think, largest city Predicted, uh, time, uh, in for Suriname. Down, uh, nine minutes, 16 seconds, uh, very close to nominal. We're at five minutes, 45 seconds. Stand by for S4B to COI. Mark, S4B to COI now. S4B to COI. It is uh, also the capital. Nominal, level sense arm, eight plus three, niner. And S2 cut off at 9 or plus 1, 6. And now I'm pick him. Capcom Gordon Fullerton reporting that 14 capable of reaching a minimum orbit uh, with a combination of a good third stage and service module engines. Meanwhile, in mission control, a status check being taken, coming up all greens. We're at uh, 6 minutes 20 seconds, uh, 1491 nautical. Gimbal motors are running. Uh, Roger 14, gimbal motors on. Six minutes, 30 seconds, 93 nautical miles in altitude, 420 nautical miles downrange. Stand by for S4B to orbit. Mark, you have S4B to orbit now. Roger, right, S4B orbit. Shepard, uh, Russo Mitchell now told that they can reach orbit uh, on booster power only if given a good third stage. Six minutes, 55 seconds, 95 nautical miles in altitude. Seven minutes, five seconds, uh, 499 nautical miles downrange. Velocity now reading uh, 16,587 feet per second. Seven minutes, uh, 30 seconds, uh, 14 uh, flying almost uh, parallel over the ocean now with Shepard, uh, with the Shepard crew in a hitch down position. Really moving out now for downrange distance. Uh, we show downrange of 587 nautical miles. Inboard cut off. Roger, inboard. That was a center engine shutdown right on time. Good thrust on the other four. Population of Suriname is about half a million, a little bit more than half a million. And here is its biggest city. Eight minutes, ten seconds, uh, 14, now 98 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 700 uh, nautical miles downrange. Velocity now reading uh, 19,881 feet per second. Staging status. Victor, go for stage. CMC is go. I just CMC go. You have level sense arm now. Find your level sense arm. Mark nine minutes, so one hundred nautical miles in altitude, eight hundred and thirty nautical miles downrange. It seems some of the photo scenery has given identification of buildings a yeah, little bit of a tough time, especially in the area now. at our nose tip there. Roger, mode four. That uh, mode four call uh, says a good uh, service. Very dense. And staging. Roger. And good thrust on one. Roger. Nine minutes, uh, 30 seconds. Thrust looks good on the S4B after staging. Looks good on the S4B. Thank you. The Could have been a cloud, too. They used up two-thirds of their Saturn stages on their way to orbit. We're at nine minutes, uh, 45 seconds, 101 nautical miles in altitude, 989 nautical miles downrange. Velocity now reading at 23,300. 
23,313 feet per second. So that's about halfway through our trip. 14, well, a little bit more than halfway. Roger. I'm trying for flights about one to two hours, so... That is the goal of each of these flights. Altitude, uh, 11,443 nautical miles downrange. Velocity uh, now reading uh, 24,206 feet per second. Fourteen Houston, predicted cutoff is uh, as planned. One one plus four three. Predicted uh, time of shutdown: 11 minutes uh, 43 seconds. We're now at 11 minutes, 10 seconds. In Houston, predicted cutoff, 1-1 one, one plus 4-3, nominal. Over. Right, 1-1 one, one plus 4-3. Downrange distance now 1,322 nautical miles. 11 minutes, uh, 30 seconds. Standing by now for shutdown. Cut off. Roger. Shut down. Uh, we'll stand by uh, now for preliminary orbital readings, uh, both on board and uh, from the ground. Okay. Well, they are in orbit. And now the fun begins, as it were. The booster is safe, and your orbit is go. Roger. Good show. Go orbit. Booster safe. Six zero power two coming off now. Houston, I have a Z torquing angle when you're ready to copy. Okay, we're showing about 99 by 102.9. Right That's your for a second. Okay. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're advised that the Vice President of the United States is now in the firing room. Uh, we will switch uh, to Cape Kennedy. Just coming. I hope I didn't keep the Vice President's thing. This would be Spiro Agnew. Control, the Vice President of the United States and their Royal Highnesses, the Prince and Princess of Spain, have now arrived in the firing room and are being introduced at this time to the launch director, Walter Kennedy. Uh, I guess it might be Mr. unavoidable. Paul, the acting director of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Ladies and gentlemen, we're honored to have with us today for the launch of Apollo 14, the Vice President and uh, His Royal Highness, Juan Carlos, Prince of Spain. May I now present the Vice President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, I suppose it, it is almost a routine performance for me to be here to congratulate the men and women of NASA on an incredibly successful launch and insertion into orbit. I must say that I never fail to be tremendously impressed and moved by this occurrence. Today is especially pleasurable because I had the opportunity to be with the Royal Highnesses of Prince Juan Carlos, Princess Sophia of Spain, and I can tell you this much, if I've ever seen two fans and converts to the American space undertaking, we have them right here in these wonderful foreign dignitaries with me today. I think that this flight has an especially meaningful and
critical uh, mission in the American space program. I don't have to enlarge upon that to the men and women here. Our dedication to our space program remains undiminished. I think that we're going to continue to press forward for what needs to be done in this respect. And I want to congratulate the people of NASA who throughout all of the pullings and tuggings, the fears, and the exhilarations that undertake a high-risk venture such as the American Space Program have been so consistent, so constant, and certainly uh, so restrained in uh, their reaction to what may have been considered to be in some areas some very discouraging occurrences. Those days are past us, and we're going forward together, not just to the moon, but I'm certain that the American program will continue uh, to press forward into the reaches of interplanetary space. And now it's a great <laughs> pleasure for me to ask <coughs> our royal... Can you give us a time uh, frame on that? You know. Prince Juan Carlos, who incidentally knows a lot more about flying than I do because he pilots his own helicopter to greet the men and women of NASA and to give us in some measure his reaction to this historic occasion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. You said that we were fans. We are fans. We came here in 1962 in our honeymoon. We met some of you that we saw today and we were very happy to see them again. We saw the installations and the facilities of NASA in Houston, with Dr. Lowe was there then, at the time, and we were very much interested. Personally, I followed a few of the tracking stations you have in my country. I know the people there and I know how well they are doing. Here, I don't have any words because you are the man who put up those three men that now go to the moon and you're doing so much for progress in, and for the whole humanity that I'm very proud to be a part of you today. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Royal Highness. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Kurt Debus, director of the Kennedy Space Center. Thank you, George. The Royal Highness, as uh, old timers in the man program, and specifically in the lunar program, when you visited us, we were just at the beginning. Now we have proceeded with several missions to the moon, and we will continue to do so. As a memento, uh, as a remembrance to your visit, I want you to have this little picture. Thank you very much. Oh, they're just chatting now. Oh, there we go. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, now at uh, 22 minutes into the flight of Apollo 14. We're uh, less than two minutes away now from uh, loss of signal uh, with uh, Canary. Apollo 14 presently in a, a circular orbit of uh, 102 nautical miles. At this time, uh, we'll play back the tapes uh, of our conversation with 14 uh, just uh, following our switch back to the Cape. Okay, replay time. Watching Houston, I have a Z torquing angle when you're ready to copy. Oh, not replay. So this is what they recorded while the Vice President and Juan Carlos were talking. Three 
At a certain point they had a launch replay, but I think I cut that out. Beyond the river in front there is French Guiana, so that's the border between Suriname and French Guiana. The river is the Moroni, I think. We are descending gently, intentionally. Now since uh, lift off, we're uh, out of uh, acquisition range uh, with the Canary at uh, this time. Uh, we expect to reacquire uh, the spacecraft uh, over uh, Carnarvon in approximately 27 minutes. At uh, 25 minutes into the flight of Apollo 14, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 51 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. Uh, we have uh, just acquired the Apollo 14 spacecraft uh, through Carnarvon. We'll uh, quickly pass on to you uh, heart rates uh, during liftoff on uh, the uh, command module pilot and lunar module pilot. Uh, Stu Roos is uh, through Carnarvon. How do you read? The fuel is definitely worrying me here. It's uh, crazy. So we are now in French Guiana. He averaged head for crew. Twenties during the boost phase of flight. In the case of Ed Mitchell, his peak rate was 90, and ran in the 80s. Commander Alan Shepard, uh, we received no data on. Uh, we suspect a loose sensor or connector, um, and uh, this uh, will be fixed uh, sometime uh, in orbit uh, during a more quiet period. We uh, presently show uh, Apollo 14 in an orbit of uh, 104 nautical miles by 101 nautical miles. Uh, we're at uh, 54 minutes uh, now into the flight. We'll stand by and continue to monitor. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 58 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. Continuing here with a uh, lull and air ground uh, conversation. At uh, this time, I'll pass along the uh, shutdown times on the Saturn as it uh, 
achieved its orbit. S1C shutdown or cutoff was uh, two minutes, 44 seconds. S2 shutdown was copied at uh, nine minutes, uh, 19 seconds. Uh, this uh, three seconds longer than nominal. And uh, the S4B shutdown or cutoff was at uh, 11 minutes, uh, 40 seconds instead of a, uh, a pre-flight uh, 11 minutes, uh, 43 seconds. We're at uh, 59 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14, uh, continuing to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, one hour now into the flight of Apollo 14. Uh, we've uh, had uh, LOS uh, with Carnarvon. Uh, we expect to acquire honeysuckle momentarily. At uh, one hour into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 14 through Honeysuckle, over. Oh, some stack there. Apollo 14, Houston, uh, through Honeysuckle, uh, Fury, go Omni, Charlie. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston, uh, one hour, uh, six minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we've had uh, loss of signal with uh, Honeysuckle. We presently show 14 in an orbit of uh, 106 uh, nautical miles by 100 nautical miles and a velocity reading of uh, 25,583 feet per second. At uh, this time, uh, we'll switch uh, to the Cape uh, for the post-flight press conference. Switching now to the Cape. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, one hour and 30 minutes uh, now since the liftoff of Apollo 14. Very lush surroundings. We uh, presently show 14, uh, less than a minute away now from acquisition, uh, with an orbit of uh, 106 uh, by 101 nautical miles. A pre preliminary look at our uh, translunar injection burn uh, puts it at a time of uh, two hours, uh, 28 minutes, uh, 27 seconds. Houston, uh, we started getting uh, pretty bad static right in the middle of that transmission. Would you say again? Roger, Houston, we have completed our L to 18. Roger. Houston, we're starting to extend the docking probe now. Uh, Roger, Ed, and I have a TLI plus 90 pad anytime you're ready to copy. Roger, one second, I'll be ready for you. Okay, it's in the problem extended. Uh, you should have ready to copy. The roadway in front of us, curving to the right there, is okay, apparently the N1. From, uh, Dr. Gilruth, uh, they're wondering how y'all like uh, zero G. Uh, say again, Houston. Dr. Gilruth was wondering how you like to fly, how you like to flight in zero G. Uh, I think I got that one, uh, Gordon. Oh. You're asking about zero G, and it's uh, it's really great. <laughs> Everybody's in really great. shape. We're having a ball. We're ahead of the timeline. Right, I'll go ahead with uh, TLI plus 90, Ed, if you're ready. Okay, it's a uh, TLI plus 90, SPS slash GNN. Down 47, 64470. Four, Minus 145. Plus one three zero. Tig is zero zero three five niner five one one three. Down eighty one minus zero five one five eight. Plus all balls. Plus eight four two zero six 
Attitude 181. Just in case it needs clarification, all balls is five zeros basically zero, in the zero, computer. One. HA is NA. HP plus zero zero one seven one. Eight four three six four. Niner zero one. We'll very often hear these long sequences of numbers. That's what they have to enter into the spacecraft computer to do the maneuvers. And there are also emergency maneuvers in case something doesn't work. Three niner niner. Four side star is NA. All the actual practical computation was done on the ground and then fed up. Obviously, they couldn't carry a really sophisticated computer on board to do astrophysics or anything. One, one, five, four, four. Three, three, seven, two, one. GET for O five G. Zero, one, two. Correction. Zero, one, zero. Five, seven, two, niner. GDC Align, Set Stars are Sirius and Rigel. Oh, no, I'm not feeling great about our three, fuel situation. Three, three. We may land at Kuru zero, eight, instead three. of going all the way to Cayenne, zero, one, three. Uh, which is uh, the airport. No uh, I think the. I don't know wh why it said Rochambeau. Uh, Rochambeau is like the name of the base used to be or I don't know I'm not clear on that but the city name is Cayenne so and, uh, it seems I've misjudged the range of this thing pretty badly uh, Roger, your burn we'll time see is zero one. and Trunyan angle three niner niner over Roger and But if I do that, that causes problems for our sightseeing. Because the next flight was supposed to be an X-Plane 11 and then we can't see our sights like that. I think we've got a thunderstorm around here. That's definitely not the spacecraft audio. <laughs> yep. There's lightning. Got the RPM outside the green range. I hope that's not a problem. But the master costume is because we're running out of fuel here. Go ahead. Okay, 
AGET of ignition is zero zero. I think maybe I'll try and pick up fuel at Kuru and then three, do the rest two, of eight, the three. little jaunt to Cayenne. I hope Minus nobody minds one, that that's five. technically more than one. I don't know if you and call that more than one flight. We'll call it one flight. Zero, four, five, three, I think I'll land eight. at Kuru. Go ahead. Roger. Zero, zero, eight, zero, zero. Three, two, eight, three. So layover at Souk, S-O-O-K, to pick up some fuel. Oh, trying to get a look at the space center, which should be up ahead soon. And I'm ready with the GLI but man. suddenly we have Go all ahead. these clouds. Roger, time base six predict two one eight five one. Attitude for TLI one seven niner one three six zero zero zero. Burn time five five two. One zero three six three zero three five five four niner Sep attitude three five niner one six eight three one niner Extraction attitude Hopefully three, the photo zero, scenery isn't one. too bad at the Space Center. Does it show SOK here? Three, That's a five, good six, question. Zero, zero. And would you give me the angles again, please? Roger, uh, Al, your readback was correct. The TLI attitude is 179er. Doesn't appear to show zero, the airport. Zero, zero. That worries me. Everything's focused on Soka. That's an interesting sort of water complex down there, huh? Jeez. That's something. Well, I've got the okay, airport on my moving map outside the game. So in a pinch, I'll declare it legal and get my fuel there as long as there's something on the ground in the photo scenery. Photo scenery sucks here. I'm thinking those buildings over there are the Guiana Space Center. Nope. 
I don't think anybody's taken any images of this area. Control, Houston, uh, one hour, to add to the game. The flight, uh, you heard the uh, transmitter injection uh, pad being passed to the crew. We're presently yep. looking at this uh, is the time of ignition of two hours, uh, 28 minutes, 29 seconds. The primary European Space Center at Kuru. The, uh, they the, don't uh, have imagery of this. Feet per second. From the look of it. Burn duration, uh, 5 minutes, uh, 52 seconds. Uh, velocity and they also don't have the associated airport, apparently. Feet per second. Which is a problem. As you heard, they uh, have a point of interest nearby. Apparently we are receiving uh, medical data uh, from uh, the commander at this time. We're that at, uh, looks like a launch site at our left wing right there. Flight of Apollo 14. Uh, this is sort of. Yep, that looks like a launch site to me. This is the launch complex, it's just Control not Houston, really uh, good. Hour, uh, 50 minutes uh, now into the flight. We, uh... Houston? So, are we going to have an airport? As you're, we're real close to LOS, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, give you the words I've got about TLI. First of all, uh, the... The, uh... Monitor angles on page L2-24 should all be increased by 2.5 degrees. And it's uh, if you're monitoring the TLI bird with the... Is it that? No. Cue card. The yes. The pitch angle should all be it's uh, reading about 9 degrees. Well, I'm going to be in trouble soon. The card, the yaw should Ooh. be within a quarter degree, one-fourth one degree of what the card reads. So I'm going to land at where the airport ought to be, <laughs> based on... based on my uh, moving map here. Apollo control, we would be parallel to it right now. Uh, apparently we had loss of signal, uh, with and I'll just land there. Just I think it's time, uh, Capcom, uh, Fullerton, uh, that slightly differently shaded Capcom strip Capcom over there. Data. This may be a horrible thing to do, we'll find out, but I have no choice. It is time we, to uh, land. Repeat, uh, we show a time of ignition uh, for a TLI of 2 hours, 28 minutes, 29 seconds, a, a delta velocity of, uh, or delta V of uh, 10,367 feet per second, a burn duration of has gotten 5 exciting minutes, 52 seconds, and Already? a velocity at time of shutdown of uh, 35,549 feet per second. Reacquiring uh, with Canaries. In Houston through Canaries, over. Okay, Houston, uh, we got nothing of your last transmission. You dropped off here. Okay, and I'll start over. Uh, for the TLI coming up on your monitor, uh, first of all, on the cue card, the yaw angles as shown are okay. The uh, pitch that you see on the ball should be nine degrees higher all the way through the burn than as shown on the cue card. Just uh, add nine to all your pitch angles and uh, that should be yep. good. It's that on, weird uh, patch there. The ordeal angles that uh, as shown on pages uh, 2-24 and 25 increase each of those by two and a half degrees. At uh, 57 minutes instead of 18 you should have 20.5 degrees. At 59 minutes, 12.5. So, Flight Sim, and there's supposed to be a airport here, SOOK. I just wanted you to know. Roger, you understand that the yaw angles are okay. Flight Sim people. Airport de Kuru. It's called. Roger, that pitch uh, is a nine degree increment over what is shown in the card. In other words, all the angles should be uh, nine degrees uh, higher than as shown on the card, the inertial angles only. All right, uh, right now we got that, uh, we're with you. Oh, oh, ow, ow, ow. There's an inauspicious okay, start to this whole deal. On your P-15, we show that I have to you, admit uh, the the uh, landing strip is a little bit shorter than that. For uh, time base six, would you check in? 
I'm gonna go over to uh, Kuru and see if they can bring a fuel truck over. <laughs> so that that's my excuse here. Thank you, Gordon. Good call. We, we'll get a fuel truck. I, I don't have much of a choice here. Oh, don't don't stop! Don't stop! Fourteen, Houston. Oh gosh. Um, for that time to take, you're going to have to reselect P15. Okay. P P15 is the uh, Saturn uh, Time Base Six initiation program. I think I'm too late. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston, uh, one hour uh, 55 minutes. Uh, we had lost the signal uh, with Canaries. Meanwhile, the uh, countdown clocks in Mission Control uh, show an, an AOS time of 11 minutes with the command module. This is an Araya, or an Apollo Ranging and Instrumentation Aircraft acquisition. Ooh, it does have a and, start uh, thing. Engine start. We're counting down now uh, for time of ignition, presently showing uh, 32 minutes, 40 yeah. seconds away from uh, time of ignition. Flaps we're at up. Uh, one hour, uh, 56 minutes into the flight, Speed uh, break continuing in. to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Diluter level? This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, two hours, uh, four minutes, uh, now into the flight of Apollo uh, I feel 14. like that doesn't tell me we how to show, uh, actually start the engine. in an orbit of uh, 106.2 nautical miles by 102.4 nautical miles. Our uh, latest update on uh, the uh, transluter injection burn uh, shows a uh, time of ignition of uh, two hours, uh, 28 minutes, uh, 30 seconds. A delta V of uh, 10,366 point uh, five feet per second. Burn duration of uh, five uh, minutes uh, 52 seconds. Predicted uh, velocity at time of shutdown uh, 35,551 point eight uh, feet per second. An altitude at time of cut cut off of 173 nautical miles. The uh, go no go call up uh, for TLI will be made after acquisition uh, at uh, Carnarvon. Uh, although we will have uh, voice communications uh, with Apollo 14 uh, through Araya, uh, we will lose uh, station acquisition uh, in about uh, two minutes uh, into the burn and uh, will not be able to read uh, onboard data. However, uh, the crew of Apollo 14 uh, will pass a burn status report at the end of the burn. Uh, uh, and what they will be reading uh, will be from their uh, disky. They will pass along uh, velocity at time of shutdown, uh, altitude. Uh, All right. At, uh, well, when in doubt. And H dot or altitude change at uh, time of shutdown. I don't the, uh, really see burn, how to start uh, the engine. Um, the, uh, oh, the uh, starter's right model. there. We're at uh, two Oop. hours. Uh, six minutes into the flight of Apollo 14, and we'll stand by. Usually, uh, we have to hold that until we acquire uh, the spacecraft. This is Apollo Control, Houston. If it works at all. Does not seem so. Hmm. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, two hours, uh, now 16 let me click it. Uh, minutes. Uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. Uh, we'll stand by uh, for uh, any uh, communications uh, with the Araya aircraft. We're 12 minutes 25. All right, control E. From, uh, time of ignition. Oh, we have to hold it for a while, it seems. Okay. All right. Oh god, it's flickering. No. No, you don't need to be in two different places. Stop. Oh, let me go out, so. Okay. It's happy now.
that was Ed Mitchell uh, responding uh, aboard the spacecraft. Hey, Houston 14, how do you read now? Okay, we are moving. Okay, I was just uh, checking the comments. Gee, you're just beautiful. Uh, the ride's really putting out for us. Well, it's not like the airport is actually an airport right now. To me, it's flatter than this part. Two minutes, 18 seconds. That was Stu Russo coming in with a comment. It's that dark patch right there. We're uh, 10 minutes away now from time of ignition. Ow. Hey, we have an S2 step flight. Okay, go. Wow. Wow. Ow. 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 Okay. Nine minutes away now. No, you can go up now. Ooh. Apollo 14, Houston, over. Uh, Roger, we missed if you did call uh, time base six starting, and we'd like to. Ah, uh, <sighs> Kuru, everyone. Okay, Dreyfus Tower. That was Al Shepard uh, responding to that call. We're at uh, 2 hours 22 minutes now. 6 minutes 25 seconds away from time of ignition. Kuru is not looking great, to be honest. 4 minutes away now from time of ignition. Apparently that's Dreyfus Tower. For a point of interest, that doesn't seem too interesting, but that's about we all the effort that's been put in here, and, so, uh, all right. Very shortly, uh, Flight Director Pete Frank will poll his flight control team as to our status uh, for TLI. Head to Cayenne. Okay, Houston 14, out of your ears. Roger 14, this is Houston, Drew Carnarvon, and you're loud and clear. Oh, you're five square. Two minutes, uh, 20, uh, or two hours, 26 minutes. Uh, Pete Frank now taking a status check with his fl flight control team. Coming up all greens. Apollo 14, Houston. Go ahead. Here, go for the moon, go for TLI. Go for the moon. Roger, go for TLI. That was Al Shepard uh, responding uh, to that go for TLI. We're at uh, 2 hours uh, 27 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, 1 minute uh, 32 seconds from time of ignition. Less than 30 seconds away now from time of ignition. Uh, our displays show a predicted uh, apogee uh, resulting uh, from this burn of uh, 250,263.7 nautical miles. We're at uh, 2 hours uh, 28 minutes now into the flight. Standing by. The airport at Kuru SOOK is supposed to be 4,000 feet of asphalt, just for the record. Roger, ignition. Not exactly what you expect expect from a space port, Roger, but still. Good thrust on the S4B. That's Al Shepard, uh, spacecraft commander, giving that report.
Booster says we look good. Uh, one minute, uh, three seconds into the burn. My Dynamics is uh, pleased with the agreement uh, between uh, his uh, his data. Show velocity build up uh, on one of our displays, uh, presently reading uh, 27,390 feet per second. Com coming up now in two minutes. Tank pressures are steady at 4-0 and 3-0. 14, Houston, roger. Al Shepard again uh, from aboard the spacecraft. Thrust data looks good. Okay, Kasern Lubeir. Uh, the velocity of uh, 29,212 feet per second. What is it? Three minutes, uh, ten seconds. Uh, now into the burn. Coming up now in four minutes. Four minutes. That's the city of Cayenne to our We've, uh, had left LOS there. With Carnarvon, uh, our, uh, Network reports we're receiving IU data through Guam. Looks good. Apollo 14 uh, tracking right down the middle of our plot boards in mission control. Five minutes, ten seconds. And Houston through Araya 2, over. So... It's... Whatever this is. Oh, this is that mast, maybe? I don't know. I think it's the buildings. That was Al Shepard uh, reporting shutdown. It looks like... Apollo control. Oh, there's a mast there. There's a building there. I think it's the building that's supposed to be Casern Luber. Okay, landing at the airport, finally. I didn't even know we could get rid of that thing. Roger, 
With that report, uh, Flight Dynamics Officer uh, Dave Reed says it uh, looks like a good burn. Uh, we're at 2 hours uh, 37 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we'll stand by and continue to monitor. Houston through Guam, over. Go ahead, Houston, say good. All right, you're loud and clear, Ed, and we should have continuous uh, voice and data from here on out. Uh, you're loud and clear through Guam. Okay, uh, good. Very uh, vivid green now. Signal strength for you now. And I might say the Earth is starting to drop away very rapidly at this point. Roger. Houston, I have an update to your uh, high gain gimbal angles uh, as shown on page 3-3 when you're ready. Okay, go ahead. Okay, about five lines from the bottom. This is the uh, high gain angles after uh, pitch around for docking. Uh, should be pitch plus 1-1 one, one and yaw plus 3-0-6. Now the airport here is a actual indicated airport on the map, so this one should be here, right? <laughs> be over to our left soon. I think I sort of see the clearing where it's at. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, two hours uh, forty. Three minutes and now to the flight of Apollo 14. Uh, the booster has advised our flight director that uh, the uh, maneuver to separation attitude uh, uh, should begin at uh, 2 hours uh, 49 minutes 23 seconds. About uh, three minutes uh, the time duration for the maneuver. Uh, separation, uh, we're now looking at uh, 2 hours uh, 59 minutes 23 seconds. Uh, we'll stand by and continue to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo 14, Houston, I have some updates uh, for your for you now, over. Uh, what type of updates? I got the S4B maneuver time and SEP time that goes on 3-1 and then uh, a new uh, S4B viewing attitude. Roger. I'm ready to copy. Okay, S4B maneuver time 2, 4 niner, 2, 3. Maneuver will be complete in three minutes. Okay, there's and runway the finally. Time is two, this is more of an ordeal than I was expecting, two, but at least the plane hold held up. Understand S4B maneuver two, four, nine, two, three, it'll maneuver for three minutes. SEP is two, five, nine, two, five, uh, two, three. That's correct, Ed, and then on page three days... Yeah, seven. I'm surprised. I mean, 370 nautical miles. That's I was not expecting one. that this would have trouble with that on a full fuel tank flying at 16,000 feet, but I guess I should have flown higher. 14 Houston. The fuel flow didn't seem to decrease with altitude. Uh, I mean, the, uh, depends on the kind of uh, engine, but... Uh, six PSI. Yeah, we beat you to it. Okay. And when you have 3.7 in front of you, uh, I'll give you the new S4B view attitude, now 22 angles. Okay, go ahead. Okay, it's about a uh, quarter of the way down where it reads uh, 93, 39, There's that bush right in front of the runway there. Hmm. Change them to read, uh, same for roll, three. Zero, 090. Zero. Pitch a plus 349.0. And yaw plus three five six point zero. Okay, well that was lighter than the one in the middle of the field. Roger, right, understand. Uh, roll is the same. Pitch is three four nine point zero. Yaw is three five six point zero. 
Well, we'll find a good parking place. They're on their way to the moon. It's a thunderous time in French Guiana, but no rain apparently. We're at the two hours, uh, 53 minutes into the flight. Well, I'll go park two by the hours, tower. Uh, 54 minutes, uh, booster reports the maneuver to a uh, separation attitude uh, has been completed. Uh, 55 minutes and mission control flight director uh, Pete Frank uh, taking a state a status Boy, this plane uh, for, uh, really talk, took a lofty position. Uh, position and docking. I'm going to sort of go right beside it and intimidate it a bit. Yes. Okay. So that's that. Okay. And got paused the audio right there. And so here we are at Cayenne in French Guiana. And next time we'll be flying an X-Plane 11 from here to SBMQ in a Piper Cheyenne 2. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.